Hey everybody, this is Jen. Welcome to the homestead and welcome to the channel. So today is a gorgeous day outside here in central Michigan. Um, it's about 40 degrees currently and I think it's supposed to get to almost 50 today. Um, which for Michigan right now is kind of warm, so it's nice. Um, you know, it's not 80 or 90 degree weather by any means, but um, when you come from single digits and then get into the 40s, almost 50s, it feels like summer. <laughs> so I am in the greenhouse, as you can tell. Uh, we just did a special run today um, into town. Uh, to get a few things, I'm going to be making some uh, curtains for my cupboards for my kitchen. Um, that's the, redoing the kitchen has been a work in progress for quite a few years. Um, we live in an old farmhouse, and a lot of the stuff is original as far as uh, the cupboards and things like that. And um, uh, the paint uh, that was chosen um, by the pre previous people who lived there uh, is kind of dark, and it just makes it really dark in there. And so we've been trying to lighten it up a little bit. There's not a lot of natural light that comes in uh, just because of the way that the house is. And so we're going to be lightening up the paint. And um, I'm putting in curtains instead of cupboard doors just to kind of soften it a little bit, if you know what I mean. Because sometimes having all that, that wood, especially if it's in a small space... Um, makes everything seem uh, very closed in, if you know what I'm saying. So, maybe putting in some curtains to lighten it up. So, that's another project, and I'll, I'll try to show you guys that later on when I get that done. But while we were in town and I was getting my fabric for that, uh, we also stopped at our local tractor supply store. Uh, to pick up a few items and I noticed that they still had some fruit trees available and we're trying to add some fruit trees to our small little homestead here uh, to be more self-sufficient um, and to grow more of our own food as much as possible and uh, so started out I had bought some peach trees I bought one through Gurney's because it's a particular variety my husband likes uh, but we also bought another one uh, to help with the cross-pollination and things. And, uh, you know, what we don't eat, we can sell at the farmer's market or I can can or whatnot. So, uh, you know, you really can not have too much fruit because I'm sure somebody out there would appreciate it. Um, so we got the peach trees. But I really want to get some apple trees. And my husband's not real big on growing apples. Uh, because they can be a mess. Um, you know, any fruit tree can be a mess. You know, they can drop their fruit everywhere. You have to clean it up. It is what it is, right? So, but I really want to get some apple trees. And one of the main reasons I wanted to get apple trees is because a friend of mine, she has some um, very old variety apples at her home. And I really want to get some of those and grow them on at my home. And the best way to do that is to graft in the uh, branches uh, of the apple that you want into another tree that you already have. And so in order to get some of her old variety apples, I need to get my own apple trees in the ground and established so uh, in a year or two, I can graft some of those other varieties in and we will have those here as well. So that's the main reason I was growing apple trees um, is, is so I can have some of her varieties as well. And uh, I really love apples. Um, and so I got some Honeycrisp apples because uh, those are the varieties I like. I really like the Honeycrisp. Um, if I can find a Fuji, I might get a Fuji for my son because that's what he likes. Um, but yeah, we're going to see how that grow, uh, how that grows. Yeah, how that goes, how that grows. So I'm going to turn you guys around real quick because I kind of want to show you what's going on in the greenhouse. 
Um, I actually got something really, really cool at Tractor Supply Company, and I was so excited. I was like a kid in a candy store because I found stuff. They was like, whoa! <laughs> it was just an awesome day. Awesome, awesome, awesome day. So I'm going to turn you guys around. It is very, very sunny if you can't tell already. Um, so, um, you know, I'm going to do the best I can to try not to glare you guys out. But, you know, we're in the greenhouse where the sun's reflecting and yada, yada, yada. So, all right. So let's turn you guys around. All right, so we are facing the south <laughs> of my greenhouse. I'm still sitting in my chair, and I'll do the pan view. So, so right there is my very special uh, treat that I found at tr Tractor Supply today. I'll show you, show you that in a minute. And then this is a new addition. My husband picked this up for me um, two days ago. We plugged it in um, because this is a small greenhouse and we don't have a way to keep it heated, so to speak, naturally. We went ahead and got, this is an oil-filled radiator and it's got temperature control on it and everything. And uh, when I have this plugged in, generally in the mornings it can keep it about 45 to 50 in here. Um, I had it going overnight though to see if it could keep the temperature in here overnight above freezing and unfortunately that did not work last night um, when I came in and checked in the morning around 7 o'clock um, it was 30 degrees in here so uh, we're going to do something a little different uh, tomorrow I have a special thermostat unit coming in that is supposed to kick on your heating or your cooling, depending on what you're trying to do at that time, when it reaches a certain temperature. Now, this already has something like that in it, but um, I want to be able to really monitor uh, the temperature and keep it where I want it and not try to guess. So um, it's going to be an addition to the thermostat that is already in this unit and we'll try it out for a couple more days and see if uh, turning this up to basically full uh, full heat but having it set on the timer that turns on and off based on temperature if uh, we can keep this warm enough overnight that I can bring my seedlings that I have growing in the house out here because uh, currently I cannot do that. I have tomatoes and peppers in my house under grown lights. And if I bring them out now, they would get killed in an instant overnight. So we'll see how this does. And I will keep you guys updated on if this little guy will keep my little greenhouse warm enough right now overnight. Where I can bring my seedlings out here and uh, they will survive. All right, now I'm going to show you this very, very special plant that I was able to find at Tractor Supply. If you've been following me uh, for a while, you know that I have a rose garden that I have planted by myself. And every year I try to add a new color of rose to it. So I have all different color roses. There was one rose that I was trying to find um, and it's very hard to find at times because it's a very special rose. And um, I believe Burpees is the one who carries the name brand. And it's called like a Blue Moon and it's a hybrid tea rose. But yeah, I think it's Burpees that carries the name brand. And then um, the other ones just call it like a Blue Rose or something. But I was so excited because Tractor Supply just got their roses in. Let's see. This looks a little rough because it was right in the back of the car. Look at that. Blue girl. So 
She is a pale lavender rose. Um, so I'm so excited I found this. I paid $12 for this. And you can see that it's a very healthy rose. It's got some nice, nice growth on it. So I'm excited. And that's why I tucked it down here. Because it'll get protected at night. There we go. So yeah, I finally, after years of wanting that color, I finally have one. So I, I like I said, I was a kid in a candy store. I was just like, oh, I just couldn't stop smiling. I was so excited. So yeah, so that's the rose that I got. And then I'll swing you over here. So this is the peach tree my husband got. This is the Red Haven. So he got this one. And then these are the apple trees. These are the honey crisp apple trees. And then in this box here. Let's see. Looks like we're upside down. We are, we are upside down. There we go. Alright, so this is the apple tree that, or excuse me, this is the peach tree that my husband wanted. And this is called uh, Georgia White, I believe. Let's see, yep, Georgia, the Bell of Georgia. And this is a white fleshed peach, which my husband really likes. Um, he doesn't really care for the yellow flesh variety. So yeah, so I brought them out here because it's a beautiful day to get them in pots. These are all dormant, um, so we're just putting them in soil. That way the roots are protected and they don't dry out because uh, these can dry out and it would actually kill the plant. And then, uh, you know, you can put paper towel around the roots and stuff like that. But then, depending on where they're at, it could mold and create fungal problems, which could kill the plant. So I'm just going to go ahead and put these in these uh, pots here. And they'll just sit here in the greenhouse. Again, they'll probably stay dormant because it only gets warm in here during the day. And then at night, it just gets really, really cold again. So I really don't expect them to... Uh, um, you know, come out of dormancy or anything like that. So, and then my lettuce. See the beautiful lettuce there. And then we got some that's starting to germinate in here. Um, very, very slow still. But, yeah, I've actually harvested some of this lettuce already. I'm so excited. Alright, so I'm going to put the phone down. I'm going to pot these bad boys up. And then I'll show you some more stuff. All right, so these are some of the other goodies that I got uh, from a big box store. And I'll actually probably get some more um, next week. Uh, but yeah, I got some of these uh, purple asparagus. Kind of cool, aren't they? Um, these are GMO free, of course. Um, <laughs> and the thing is, is uh, you cannot get GMO crops unless you are a crop farmer so but you know they try to tell people who don't know that that this is indeed gmo free um these aren't heirlooms um i don't think they don't see heirlooms on them but it's okay so yeah i got a couple things of purple asparagus here my son loves asparagus so these are getting grown for him i already have the green variety i think it's martha washington Unless Washington is uh, purple. I don't remember. But anyways. Yeah, so we got some asparagus. And then we have... Um, these are seedless grapes. Again, GMO free. Just hilarious. Um, but yeah, these are Suffolks. So I got two of those here. Alright, and then these are the golden raspberries. So, really, really cool. I have... A whole bunch of variety of raspberries right outside my greenhouse right there. I actually have to prune that patch. But yeah, so these are golden raspberries. And like I said, probably next week I will pick up a few more, especially of the golden raspberries. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in pots as well. Again, just to protect the roots from either drying out or becoming moldy. So I'm going to use these one gallon pots here and just fill them up with soil and 
put those in just to keep them. And then when it warms up, uh, probably between April and May, because I want to do it when the ground's thawed, but before things really start coming out of dormancy, we'll put these bad boys in the ground. But for now, I'm going to put them in pots. Okay, so I got the grapes potted up here. Again, they're just put in soil. I will water them in. Uh, this is to protect the roots. And then what I did to mark them is I simply took the box that they came in. I'll grab one. And uh, just cut the label off. And then attached it to uh, the pot. Some of these pots already had like a hole in them. But some I actually put just a hole in. That way I could attach the label to the pot so I know what it is. Because at first sight, the grapes and the raspberries look very identical. So I want to make sure that I had them labeled. Especially for later on when I go to plant these. So I can see exactly what varieties these are. Now I have these asparagus here. These ones. And I'm going to attach the label to this pot. I put a hole right here so I can attach the label. And uh, so we're gonna put these guys in. Aren't they just gorgeous? So the way that you're supposed to plant asparagus is you got the crown here. And the crown, there's supposed to be, I think, three plants here. So you plant them and you have the crown just below the surface of the soil. So we're gonna go ahead and put all six of them in here and again we're not going to be growing them in this pot we're just putting them in here for the time being to keep these roots nice and healthy um, and damp you know with the right moisture so they don't dry out and die on us and then in the springtime uh, when it's a little bit more appropriate we're going to actually put them in the ground so i'm going to go ahead and put these guys in here and I'll bring you back in a little bit. All right, so everything's potted up, including my little rose guy there. He's going to be put back under the plastic to keep him nice and safe, since he does have growth on it. And then I have the asparagus and the apple and peach trees. I have the other peach tree over here. So they are all good to go. So that is today's update from the sunny greenhouse. Uh, I'm so excited to have some fruit uh, trees and bushes and things like that. And of course, like I showed you, my purple rose that I've been trying to get for quite a few years. And every time I try to get it, it was sold out. So like I said, when I saw that uh, today at Tractor Supply, I was... Woo! so excited and there was a couple of them there uh but i was like you know i'll just do one and um it's a very healthy one and later on this year if i want to i can go ahead and actually uh propagate i eat another one from that one so i can have a couple of them i'm going to try to do that with my neil diamond rose this year uh, propagate another one um, that way i have a couple of each variety here in the garden um, it's good to have a couple of each. That way, especially if you're growing a rare variety or hard-to-find variety, if one dies, you still have another one that you can, uh, um, you know, repropagate into another plant again instead of just losing it completely. So that is my plan with that. Uh, but yeah, I'm really, really excited to get this done. Um, I'll probably be doing some winter sowing starting tomorrow. A little bit later than what I had hoped. I hoped I had started it uh, last week. Uh, but, you know, I've been dealing with a lot of health struggles that have really just whipped my butt. And I'll talk more about that in another video. Um, but, uh, yeah, it is time to start winter sowing those cold crops. Because it's getting closer to where those cold crops would actually start germinating and growing in my area here so I need to go ahead and get those done and uh, that's going to be a fun journey so I'll try to remember to bring you guys along um, as I start this year's winter sewing project 
So thank you for joining me today. I hope you had a wonderful time just watching the little excitement that um, comes from getting brand new stuff for the garden and getting it ready. That way when it's time to put them in the garden, they're good to go. So I just thank you so much for being with me today. I really appreciate it. Um, and if you haven't already, I'd ask you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below if you don't mind. Uh, staying with me as we go through this journey together. And, as always, I hope wherever you are, you're wonderfully blessed. So until next time, everybody, bye-bye.